<laughs> right here. <laughs> We're in the screen together. <laughs> 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 you, you okay with your look? <laughs> Are we live? Yep, Fran and Friends is live. Yes. Us, Professor. Us, Fran. Oh, everybody, welcome and happy Friday. If you're not having a happy Friday, that's okay too. Um, Professor Zahelia is a martial arts master. And I will allow her to share with you um, her background a little bit. But before she gets into that, I would like to ask a few funny questions so that way we can break the ice. Funny questions. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. So the first question is, so Professor, can you please... <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we're always having deep conversations. Oh, see what happened was <laughs> we're, we're always having deep conversations and we laugh at the growth of things, right? Yeah, because it's so painful. You got to laugh it out. Yeah. So I, I was thinking like, damn, what was something funny that like a moment that we had about that? You some other one we just had a few seconds ago when you no, said just going to a party. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to sleep? Oh, yes. So I, so I, oh my God, go ahead. <laughs> so, so sometimes I can't hear and us uh, screams everybody. <laughs> Is my mic on? Yes, it's on. All right. Um, funny things that we laugh, I feel, because. We've been through so much pain, like sometimes it's just got to be laughable. So when we do have our deep talks, when we're working out, um, we find laughter within the pain. We find laughter within the struggle, as well as um, discovering what it is we're laughing and struggling about. <laughs> like sometimes you can't be making stuff up. You just you got to laugh because some things make sense and some, some things make no sense at all. Like. What's the new saying? Make it make sense? Yeah, make it make, make sense. Make it make sense. Like, you can't, or something's like, you can't make this stuff up. It's like, the things that we go through in life, the things that we, uh, that we stumble upon, or the things that are in divine time can come our way with purpose. We just have to know what is it and how. And sometimes it's just so funny because it's like, sometimes we just can't believe these things that are happening to us. Like, we have to laugh. Yeah. No, you just totally. have to like giggle it out sometimes. <laughs> you have to cry it out. You have to scream it out. You have to laugh it out. You have to, you know, all the emotions. All that out. Yeah. Yeah, I was just telling Professor, for those of you guys that don't know, I was like, hey, Professor, I'm going to go check out the singles party on the weekend. <laughs> she goes, did you... Did you say a swingers party? I'm like, oh, hold up, Professor. I haven't graduated that. I haven't graduated on that realm yet. But if that, when I do get there, I will let you know. But no, I was not going to a, a swingers party. I was going to a singles party. No shade, no judgment. You know, I'm, I'm slowly getting back out. You know, I'm, I'm a, in widow. I'm a widow. So, you know, I'm slowly getting out there so i don't know i mean i'm am i open to all these things <laughs> we'll see but that's what i thought she said and i was basically like more power to you like live <laughs> live live your life but yeah that was a funny moment that we just shared a few moments ago before we started it's mm -hmm. enough having to deal with men i can't imagine as a woman how that interaction would feel like. But that that's yeah. going to be for another conversation. Yeah. <laughs> we can go triple, triple X. That we can talk about. Yeah. Or we can. I mean, uh, the point of today's podcast and is called Insecurity in Women. And I wanted to share about that because we've talked about this quite a bit in our fields, who we are as women, just in life in general, and how that energy affected us. But I want Professor to share with you guys some of her background and just this powerful, dynamic being. Prof 
professor's like 5'2", but don't let that fool you. Do not let the height fool you. You see that smile back there? It's dangerous. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she was featured on a magazine not too long ago, and I should have brought it with me. And this lady, I'm telling you, let let so she wears boho clothing, but don't let her lift up her sleeve. It's like boom, 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 boom. <laughs> don't look at my, don't look at this arm right here because this will fool you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna allow her to have her accolades, not have her accolades, but display all the work that she's been putting in into the martial arts community. Well, I have been a martial artist practitioner student teacher now sole proprietor for um, since 1992 wow 1992 um and now it's 2024 what's the math on that professor i'm slow oh no i still count my fingers Loki, i still count on my fingers so <laughs> i don't know that means a long time long long long, long time um put in a lot of work blood sweat tears stones all have been felt all have been embraced all have been accepted at its time that it was given i love what i do it is my lifestyle i truly appreciate that i have been blessed and highly favored to be a part of this majestic lineage of Sanukushu Jiu-Jitsu. Sanukushu Jiu-Jitsu is the type of system that I was into by my instructor father, Grandmaster Urban Muhammad. So growing up as a dojo baby, I um, having my, my teacher as my father. She went through some bumps, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, I've been through some major bumps and bruises and uh, I wouldn't have it any other way, though. Man. You know, it, it, it made me who I am now. You know, the good, the bad, and the ugly mm. of life. And um, I will be forever grateful for my teachings. With that being said, I have <clears throat> grown into a woman who is in tuned with herself in the most divinest, divinest, duality way that I could be at 44 of years of age now in my, in my life. I tried to express to my students and to my cubs, my children, I, I give everybody my life experiences. That's the only way I know how to teach. I'm not trying to make up things that I've never touched or experienced myself. And um, some of those things have been some rough journeys. <laughs> Ooh, child. <laughs> and some things have been smooth and all the in between. So being a martial artist gives you the discipline, gives you the mindset, gives you the physicality, gives you your, your acceptance to evolve, your growth to the struggles of what you will endure and to get you to keep pushing to never quit. Even though those days you don't want to get out the bed. Even though those days you just like, yo, I'm not feeling it today. Yeah. Uh, martial arts has given me the discipline to keep pushing forward. Being in the martial arts has provided me a safe space for myself and for my students to be able to grow, to be able to seek and find knowledge that some have already within. They just don't know it yet. Yes. And some are, are and some are, are growing into it and it's so majestic seeing my students grow and evolve and, and seeing them discover things about themselves that they, they didn't know that they already had from within. You know, and, and that's the part of seeking and finding truth from within. You know, that's not easy because you gotta have a lot of truth moments with yourself. And um, like real truth moments, not telling somebody what you know they want to hear and, and I'm talking about the stuff you don't want to hear right that's the stuff you got to accept because that's the only way you're going to evolve and uh, move forward what was the question <laughs> <laughs> where 
me on the right path. <laughs> yeah, you're just sharing with us yeah. your history. I mean, mm-hmm. um, the just coming from that kind of background, like as far as like, in, oh, sorry, as far as like insecurity is concerned, what's one of the major things that you have found being a woman um, in the martial arts industry? Like how has that affected you? What are some of the things that you've done to make your position known as a feminine energy? In my journey. And what's what's some of the things that you struggle with, like yeah. on that journey? Yeah, in my journey I have um I have had I have had to, the insecurities of knowing if I could be able to do this. Can I can okay, so growing up on the mat I was the only female too, right? Mm. And I was working out with like men men, like men men <laughs> like they were like 20 30 40 years old yeah but like men who um some are from the streets oh. <laughs> some are from you know what i'm saying like everybody came in on whatever chapter they were on and and they knew that the dojo would, you know be very very uh, beneficial to them so everybody walked in on a, on a certain chapter so basically professor was fighting thugs so <laughs> so yeah <laughs> And my insecurity I had that I had at that time was, can my little self with these little hands be able to, you know, get somebody in their throat and drop them where they land? And that took a lot of finding self-confidence within myself and, and to believe that I can be able, that I can, like, truly be able. And it doesn't matter what the size and the shape and the gender, like, it honestly doesn't matter, you know, to me. This is, look, this is my belief, okay? This so, is not what y'all, whatever, whoever else, this is what um, what I have experienced. So what did that look like, you having to find that self-confidence? Like, you said you had to dig in and find that. What did that journey look like? It was a battle. It was war. So was you were warring with yourself? With um, myself like, and with the men who did, who did not believe me. Oh, you're just a girl. Let me go light on you. Or, oh, you just a girl. Let me go hard on... Some, some loved me and some hated me. I don't some, know if you some guys... Some went hard on me because they wanted me to succeed in the streets. Some went soft on me because they didn't believe that I could succeed in the streets. Some wanted me in other ways than what they should have wanted me. Hold because on. I'm a woman. Hold on, Professor. Uh-huh. I don't know if you guys saw that, but Professor was like, you know, and then she don't even know her own strength. She almost pushed me off the damn table. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hold up. Little, 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 things do a lot. <laughs> little, little things do a lot, you know. So so these guys were like, okay, whatever. You you don't mean anything. Some were. And looking down on you basically. Like, you know, cuz you know that sometimes unfortunately the male mentality thinks that we are the weaker sex, we are um unworthy, unvalued, yada yada yada. And some women do believe that, unfortunately, because we've been brainwashed to think that we are the weakest link. And uh, there's there's something so powerful that she said to me a couple of times, actually, while we were uh, in a session. <clears throat> and um, I was learning how to fall. Mm-hmm. And then. I don't like falling. I don't know about you guys, but I don't like being pushed down. I don't like being pushed. You Obviously, you saw she pushed me earlier. I almost fell. I don't know how to break my fall. And so, yes. So when Professor was teaching me, I was like, Professor, do I have to learn this? She was like, Fran, we got to, we're going to fall, but you have to know how to embrace that impact, how to take that impact, yeah, with you. And allow that energy to fall with you. Basically, we're transposing that energy. And I thought to myself, are we talking about martial arts? Or are we talking about life? Because all that's relevant. And I just thought that was so amazing how you can just take that one small thing and just apply it to the to various... Life. Yeah, yeah, to, yeah, to martial life. Martial arts is life, you know, for yeah. me. And it's, what the saying is, it's, it's, you're going to fall. Okay, you're going you're gonna to fall. You can't stop that. But it's how you land. How you going to land? And you're going to land the best way 
you can't at that time. Yeah. You know, not saying you're not going to feel the impact, not saying you're not going to get some cuts and bruises and things, but you may even have a broken elbow, okay, but you have another arm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, things, you'll be landing you know, like this. <laughs> things, things happen, but at least you still have your breath mm-hmm. because you didn't land on your back or knock your own self out and took the wind out of you. Mm-hmm. So, it's how you land. Speaking of landing, all those guys that um, looked down on you from back in the day, how has have they seen your growth? Because I'm sure that you're all over social media. How has that impacted um, <clears throat> your attitude towards that kind of male energy? Um, I I need to blow my nose. Growing up, you know, hold the mic. <laughs> yeah, hold the mic. Mic first. Phone check. Uh, growing up, <laughs> because I was a child, I did not uh, know how to channel these different energies because again i mean things started to shift once i caught puberty and started becoming a teenager but Mm. you know when that happened then i can see the the feeling that boys and men had with me or against me the ones who were against me um it did bother me sometimes i I never i didn't understand why because i understand myself Mm. so once i got to understand myself Whatever they were saying didn't matter <laughs> because I didn't let it get to my soul. I didn't let it get to my heart. That's where I started to develop thick skin. So that's why I was, I was wondering, like, <clears throat> when we are, are feeling that insecurity of, it, do you think that comes from a sense of not knowing oneself? True. But then how, how long are you going to not know yourself? Mm. When when do you start putting in the work to try to discover who you truly are? Mm-hmm. How? Some people, we can be talking, oh, divine and feminine and truth and this, and, but what, how do how you do, like, what is it? How do you do it? Nobody, you know how some people like, hey, you start a business, you have a successful business. Please tell me how, oh, you know, you just got to work hard. Mm-hmm. Okay, but how? Oh, you know, you just got to get out there. See how that's, <laughs> see how I'm not telling you nothing? Yeah. See how I'm not telling yeah. you nothing? Yeah, it's general information. General. I I didn't have the tools set aligned for me to figure out how to become uh, brave and to gain the courage. And, you know, not just seeing how I grew up. I love my parents. But there was a certain time in my life where I, this was self, self-discovery. self mm. And what what it was that I did is I faced it. I looked at that mother right in the eyes. Damn. And I was like, it's going to be my time today. What were one of those, like, face it moments that happened if you, if you feel comfortable to share? When I got punched in the face. Hmm. Yeah. What did that look like? When some, when, so there was somebody who really had it out for me and I didn't know at the time. Hmm. Because I'm thinking everything was fine. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I'm going to continue to be who I am, but... It totally, I didn't even see it coming. So Mm. it was a surprise um, to where this person... Was it a friend? Allegedly? Allegedly. Wow. Uh, Allegedly, uh, you know, Dojo. Oh. To where he literally tried to knock me out. She said he was a beast. Like, a beast. Like, he gave me his all. I'm talking about slow... Fresh out the pen, kind of look and feel like, like, like Debo. Debo, damn, gave me all that he had. Oh, I wobbled, I wobbled, but I never got knocked out. And Dang. I pissed him off even more. It made him even more upset. He kept trying. You know, this is the scar that I have from it. This will always be here. Mm. But this is all that I have from it. <laughs> I can't imagine and, taking and now that. that person could never breathe again. Because mm. I don't think you're not going to get nothing back. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So that's, too, when I realized how strong I was inside. Because you have somebody who truly, truly had hatred for me. Wow. Who was truly the devil's BFF. And tried to give me all, everything that he had. 
I still, I'm still wrapping my head around the whole Debo thing. Like, really? Yeah. Like, that's I a mean, big he, ass character. He locked his, like, he lying, like, he framed himself. Wow, and it was just like, like he got. Oh, I got hit. Don't don't think you're gonna be in fight and not get tagged. And Professor, but my will you, from within. I have to remind you of your strength. Stop pushing Sorry. me off here. <laughs> I'm gonna be like tuck ducking and rolling over here. <laughs> but that from within, that's when I realized that I have more than what I thought I had. That I have the will to live because mm. I really feel that he was trying to kill me. Mm. I really truly believe that that man, that person, because he's not a man, that that figure of somebody in a male's experienced body was trying to kill me. Mm. And the fact that that I was wobbly, like shaking, wobble, but you know how you get hit and boom. And somebody just boom, just mm-hmm, hit the ground, mm-hmm. and that's probably what he wanted. Mm. But it did not happen. Wow! So I knew that I had it from within that I can take the strongest punch from the strongest devil's um, student. So was your <laughs> mind? Live. So was it your mindset that like, dang, even though he hit you with all of his strength, you felt the impact of it, and you just like, okay. I'm I'm still here. I'm still standing. I I still have grit and fortitude. Oh, okay. This right here is just basically confirmation for me that I belong here and I'm here to stay regardless of what this impact of hate looks like. That, that was it. Wow. That was it. So my insecurity in the beginning was, can I punch and kick and fight these men? And then when this fool really tried to knock me to F out, mm-hmm. I realized that I could. Wow. <laughs> That's so amazing. So it's the challenges that come right in front of you when you least expect it. It's, to, it's, it's a fight or flight mode, right? Wow. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a, another insecurity is, is other women. Hmm. Other women who so-called call you they sister, or so-called call you, or whatever. Oh, before you get into that, uh-huh. Professor, is that the reason why you started the dojo? No. I started the dojo because I wanted to be with my father. Oh. He was my teacher. Okay. First, I just wanted to go to just go hang out with Pops. It wasn't like, oh, I want to get in. I just, because that was the only time we really ever shared together. Okay. The only time that I feel like I have a slot in to be with him. Mm-hmm. Right. He was a busy man. Um, but when I really wanted to do it for myself mm-hmm. is when I was in high school. Because... Mm. Now I'm trying to figure out why guys are looking at me in a way that, that they want to flirt. You know, I, didn't, oh, I was okay. still avert. Like, I didn't know none of this. You okay, know what okay, I mean? Okay. I never really got to talk growing up from either parent, so it was a lot of self-discovery. Oh, oh, like the the, bo- bo- the birds and the bees talk? Birds and the bees. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know what we talk about. <laughs> Had to figure it out on, on my own. You know, and that's not my parents' fault. It's just... You know, they old school. It's just what it was, mm-hmm. you know? But when um, when that started happening, you know, I had I would have um, student men come at me. I would have faculty men. Hitting on you? Come to me. Oh. I would have women come to me. Oh. And I was like... How old were you? I was a teenager. Wow. Yeah. Y'all nasty. <laughs> and, but that's when it was like, what's really going on? Mm. And then I realized what was happening when I got assaulted. What do you mean? To where your professor if, if, has if you want, If you want to, if you no, want to share, professor. Um, I'm good. <laughs> I'm okay. good now. Because <laughs> okay. I wish somebody would now. I'd gladly catch a case. Um, but, you know, we have, not all of us, but I have been through some rough times in my young life to where um, I was assaulted. Mm-hmm. And to try to figure out how to get out of that situation. I'm sorry. And not knowing... Sad at that time of my life what to even do Mm. you know because i what do they say barely go to 
third base with somebody at this day and at that time and as a teenager. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So whatever third base was. Not a home run, just up to third base. So imagine now you're going to home run and you didn't even want it. Mm. <laughs> mm. You know, so um that opened up another portal of what it is to be a woman mm. in a young woman's body. But to be a woman. You understand? So is that person in jail now? <clears throat> no. Mm. No. Um, and it's whatever. Mm. Now, <laughs> you know, I've I've figured out how to heal. Um, through uh, trial and error. Even now in my life at forty four, um, I'm healing through trial and error. Now being a widow. Nah, I, that, you know. that hit tone for me, Professor, because I don't know if you knew, like, that happened to my girls. Mm. So, I, and it was somebody that was close to us that did it. You knew the person. Yeah. Yeah. And so, in a very raw way, I can definitely, uh, that feeling of mistrust, that feeling of, um, what is that called? Like when somebody just, you know, you takes your innocence away. Yeah, because they know we we nice. They know that we've never been touched. It's like it's like a prize. We're a prize sometimes, you know. And and they don't they don't see how we feel about it because mm. we don't matter. We don't matter at that time. Mm. So now, so so the insecurity that is now a strength mm. move is now it's not even strategic it's, it's who I am mm. you know I, I value myself I'm, I'm worthy I know I love being a woman I'm not trying to be a man even though I can I can fight with next to one mm. I don't want to be a man Mm. I love being a woman. I love that I'm able to bear children. I love that I can be sensual. I love that I can be sexual. <clears throat> I love that I can be strong and soft. I love that I can carry grace. I love that um, I can be mysterious. I love that. I love everything. I love. I, I love it. I'm so glad the Creator chose me to be a woman. <laughs> like straight up. <laughs> Like, if I was to be in the afterlife, I'd be like, you know, probably, I don't know, something in nature. Like, you know, make me a beautiful flower or something. Just let me chill. <laughs> I don't know, but. <laughs> something soft. Something soft. Something and with ease. Make me a cloud. Life, this life is a lot of work. <laughs> Great, I'm grateful, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> uh, um, thank you for being vulnerable about that, Professor. Um, you have to be vulnerable. It's like, you yeah, know, to me. I, I don't know. Some people have some people have things they don't want to share and that's fine. And some people have things they do want to share. I feel like in my life in order for me to heal, I got to express it. Yes. You know, um I don't go to therapy. I'm not saying that's bad. I do, I'm just not that woman. I'm not that person because I feel like I have it from within to get it together. Yeah, but you you have yes, we do have our internal strength. Mm-hmm. I think also too, like with the exercise and stuff that you do with martial arts, that also helps to, um, I guess, build channel you. that energy. It helps build channel you. build. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it helps build you, your mind, body, and your spirit. With well, what I do with raw life defense, I'm not, you know, I'm speaking for raw life defense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This is who I am. And yep. we work through mind, body, and spirit. You cannot have one without the other. Boom. <laughs> boom. 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 <laughs> and raw life is I and I. I and I is raw life. And it's my experience of me living, becoming Zahelia. Mm. And who is Zahelia? Zahelia is a person that has lived. <laughs> At 44, child. Mm. I have lived. I've been there. I've done that through my experiences, you know. And I've survived. I've I've been all right. Mm. You know, I've been been all right. And I can always be grateful for the Most High to, you know, provide me with the strength and the courage to be brave, to be able to 
see what's going on to be able to make these moves. That I, I don't have blinders on. That, that you know what I'm saying, like. And then I'm always willing to learn, even though I got what I have going on. Mm -hmm. I'm still a student. Okay. I'm still a student in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So the dojo is an expression of your strength, and you sharing that with other people. The dojo is also a place that provides safe space to mm -hmm. be able to create and discover who you are and how you move and how you think and how you love and how you cry and how you channel and how do you feel all these emotions that the human body is supposed to experience and be able mm -hmm. to still keep going forward. Mm. I felt that. Did y'all feel that? I felt that. Did you feel it? <laughs> so for y'all women looking for a space to have peace, to learn about yourself, come to Raw Life. Um, it's in the city of Long Beach and uh, meets on Tuesdays and Saturdays. You can check out Professor Zahalia's Instagram. You can also inbox me if you want some more information. So what is next for you, Professor? You are on a magazine cover. You're getting ready to be on this huge panel with various martial artists grandmasters. What is next on the world scope for Professor Zahalia? You know, hopefully just to keep staying in my truth while I'm doing all this, mm -hmm. you know, because around certain times in your life a lot of certain people come around your way for whatever reasons mm -hmm. either a distraction or guidance mm -hmm. but i hope that i continue to know who is who and mm -hmm. what is what mm -hmm. and um and keep keep moving in in righteousness and keep moving in in your truth in my truth because I worked so hard to figure out who the hell I am now. I ain't let nobody take this from me. I don't give a damn. Man. <laughs> I, I've been... I... Self-discovery is so not easy that when it actually happens, it's like this huge breakthrough. Right. And it's orgasmic and it's just like amazing that you found something of yourself and don't ever let nobody take that away from you and tell you that you something else. Isn't it, though? It's like when you find, you're like, oh, shit, this is my truth. Like this right here, I'm digging into this ditch right here, putting my flag in, mm -hmm. covering the hole up with cement with my name inside of, you know, on this flag waving. Mm -hmm. I am here. I've made it to this spot. Mm -hmm. And every time like we make it to like a different a uh, whole or a different um, progression in our journey, it feels so rewarding. It does. It feels rewarding because especially when you put in the work, when you, mm -hmm. you really put in the work. Don't expect any changes if you don't put in the work. You can't Amazon your life. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I still you be trying to Amazon my life in certain let areas. It come down with, with customization <laughs> of what it is, you know, like. Like for real, you know, you gotta, you gotta put in the work, and it's, and it's, it's not easy, but it's very beneficial. You know mm. what I'm saying? You just gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep going. Especially us as women, we have to keep. The future is female. Look, mm. I'm not a feminist, okay, but the future is female, just straight up. Like we didn't, you know, even even for the black culture, like things are going to turn around back in our favor with all the shit that we done been through. Mm. You know, so for me, being a black female, a black woman, a, a melanin divine duality of feminine energy, mm. you know, like, I'm excited for the future because I know I'm not, like, the, I'm not the only one who's not putting in the work. Mm. I can't wait for, oh, yeah, you're going to share that story, Professor, but, uh, about the, uh, that, the other female that had that insecurity in the martial arts community and how you, how you face that. I don't know what it was. I'm trying to remember which what what uh You said something about like it was uh, like she was maybe at, like some kind of high ranking officer. I don't know, but there's been women 
not just in the martial arts, but women in, that's been around, I used to be a dancer. Um, so I was in, in the music, the music, entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. I was back up dance, this a and that. A professional dancer? Professional. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, I could get it. Oh, shit. I can get it. And, and you got the bus to move. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you have it. <laughs> Y'all saw leg. that leg move? <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that I knew that I was, I was a dancer, right? But I was quiet, right? And I, and I still am. I'm not really... I talk, but really not. Like, I'm mellow, but I'm active, you guys. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm chill. Yeah, I'm in the circle, but I'm not... I'm not the life of the party. Like I'm, I'm chill. I'm chill. I'm laid back. Yeah. So that's how I am, regardless. So, um, I'm laughing. But you can't deny my. You couldn't deny my my dancing on the dance floor. Mm. Like you cannot deny my skills on the mat. You can't deny what the Most High has given me. Mm. What the most authentic uh, movements that I can provide. Now, to some women and to some men that can either scratch a nerve with them because there's there might be something inside that, that they wish they had yeah that they don't but they might see it in me instead of instead of being on the team they want to go against it yeah and so they would talk a lot of shit you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying or try to drag my name try to throw all these stones with me and just like i wrote in the magazine i wear my scars like a backless dress you know what I'm saying? I just felt the stones that people have thrown at me, like, I have built an empire with them. I think what's, what you some know? people don't realize, right, is that, like, when they do see something beautiful, when they do see something that, um, like, a beautiful talent, uh, something that causes them to be inspired, if, they're, if, if they don't have it within themselves, it should be more of a curious question, like, dang, how can I get to that space? Can I talk to her? And the feeling sometimes that is created from that is because there's insecurity there of something that they don't have. They wanna have it, but they don't know how to ask the questions because maybe they couldn't, or maybe their parents didn't teach them how to communicate. Maybe their parents didn't teach them how uh, to. However you was raised is how you was raised, but it's your responsibility to switch it up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So after a while, like, well, you got to stop blaming how you how you was raised. You know, if you plan on doing the work on how to become who you want to be now. You know what I mean? So yeah. Like, because I've had a lot of shit going on in my life, and I don't blame my parents anymore. Nah, but some you people know don't mean? know, even some at this don't. stage. That's, that's so it's like, here. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's why we're here talking that's about it. That's why we're here talking so about it's it. A, it's okay to not to be in the unknown. But why are you in the unknown with yourself? Don't go bashing somebody else because you're in the unknown. <laughs> you know, you just you, you just sound like a hater. So what happened, Professor? Did they? Uh, what happened with the with the story? Did they end up? So what, ha what happened was <laughs> is that they tried to run my name through the mud. Mm. They tried to say certain things about me that are untrue. Um, and the fact that I, again, I'm laid back, quiet, I don't let, I try not to let any of these energies come my way, but it's not like if you, nobody likes to get talked about, you know what I'm saying? No. Let's, let's keep it 100, nobody, right. you know, it's not a good feeling, No. but I, I have to act like I don't give a fuck, you know what I mean? You know, but I do sometimes, but then there comes a time where I realize that's not a me problem. Even though the energy is like I'm living rent, rent free in their head, that's not my fault. You good, Professor, because I'm still working on that. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm still, like, I'm, I'm still working on it, too, but I'm, I'm getting better because I'm working on it. Okay. I'm getting better because I'm still working on it. You know, like, this magazine came out. A lot of people was with me. A lot of people was against me. Hmm. Either way, I'm balanced out. That's the yin and the yang. But what you're not going to do is you can't, you know, you can't take away what the most high has given to me. Hmm. And there's always going to be a higher power of protection. Now, even now that my late husband is my spirit guide, he's my ancestor. He's, mm -hmm. he's our uh, angel and guidance in, in the other life. You know that, you know, you got to watch out who, who's, who's protecting who in the other life. Mm -hmm. My husband is now on the other side taking care of me and my children. And, you know, it is what it is. You come step to me and my children, you just better beware. <laughs> the ancestors is coming. <laughs> you know, because I'm already crazy about me and my children, so, I mean, 
People will say stuff to your to around about you, but won't say it to your face. Yeah. So, like I said, we're all still growing on that part. <laughs> <laughs> so, Professor, before... Oh, yeah. good. No, no, good. Were you finished with the story? I was, yeah, I was just going to say at the end of the day, just you're, you're going to get... When you're doing something right, there's going to be a lot of distractions. When, you, mm-hmm. when, you, when you're going into righteousness of what you're trying to pursue as the person that you are trying to become, there's going to be obstacles. You know, it's going to be some smooth sailing and it's going to be some rough terrain. Like, it is what it is. You just got to keep going. All I can say is just living your truth. And some people are like, well, what does that mean? What being, does that mean for you? Being honest. Mm. Being honest with the good. Being honest with the bad. Acknowledging what those things are. Taking it in and figuring out solutions. Stop. Mm. Don't, just don't be a complainer. What are you going to do with it? You know, not even a complainer, but once you find out what it is that you're trying to fix or trying to grow, mm-hmm. plant the seed and start watering yourself. Yeah. Just don't, don't, don't. Okay, this is what I figured out. But then you don't make no moves. On right, it, right. You know, and you have to have the motivation. You have to be driven. You have to have the ambition. Where do you get that from? You're going to get tired of being tired. You're going to get tired of being tired and stuff is going to shift. So when you're tired of being in that space of insecurity, um, what's one of the key things that you can leave for people that's something simple, something applicable? I heard something the other day called the triple A, and it's accept, acknowledge, wait, yeah. Ask, accept, and acknowledge. And you just take your hand, put it here, you're asking yourself what it is that you're feeling, you're acknowledging it, and then you accept it. Whether you feel good or you feel not so good, just as long as you're honoring yourself in what you're feeling at that moment, you begin to give yourself power back Mm -hmm. that you had given away to somebody else or something else. So what would be something like that that you can leave with the community today? I say breathe. Mm. <laughs> breathe. There's all different types of breath. So just know which one fits for you at that moment in time that you're dealing with, whatever you're dealing with. You got to breathe. Mm. You got to breathe so you can be able to have space to find clarity. What kind of breathing, Professor? Teach him, teach him something. A breath. Breathe in through your nose, okay. out through your mouth. Breathing just in through your nose, in and out through your nose. Breathe. And, and oh. I'm not even a, I'm not talking about yoga. Because I'm not certified in yoga. I'm certified in raw life defense. <laughs> a disclaimer. Yes. Yeah? So, <laughs> you know, but it's all moving meditation. Okay. It's all moving meditation at the end of the day. Okay. So breathe in and breathe out. So when you say moving meditation, like? Like me doing martial arts, me punching and kicking is also a moving meditation. <laughs> Moving meditation, like in like in yoga. Now we're on power. <laughs> like 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 in yoga, because I do take yoga classes, or mm-hmm. I do my own moving meditation on my own. That, I didn't know that. That you're breathing and you're and you're doing movement. You know, you have warrior. You know, the the things that they label. I'm not. I don't know if that was the origin of those names, but things like warrior one, warrior two, things oh, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um, but in now switching over to martial arts, you know, we have our forms, we have our drills, we have our moving meditation, whether you want to do it soft and, and like a Tai Chi vibe, or you want to do it hard, like a karate vibe or a boxing or an Aikido, like it's all different variations. Martial arts is not just always about kicking and punching. You know, it's a lot of fluidity involved. Well, this the ones, the one that I do, it's a lot of fluidity you know, we're, we're like a way. Still waters run deep. Say that one more time. You're very slow. Still waters run deep. Still waters run deep. Mm-hmm. It's like sometimes <laughs> I want to be a mermaid. Mm. You know how we can lure people? You know how they lure people yes. in? Yes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this well is going to... <laughs> be very is full (laughs) and we're gonna come back with some more i'm sure we're gonna uh interview professor again so please 
leave her a comment let her know how much you enjoyed um our first podcast i do and want to give thanks to you for trying to have these platforms and trying to get other women and your you know and do what you feel like what your purpose is in life you know what i'm saying and yeah. i don't even know how her and i met was it did you dm me okay what? so y'all want to know the backstory <laughs> So what happened was I was getting out of a relationship mm. and mm. it was I was dating a narcissist and in that relationship um I a couple of times I was getting tussled with this guy like he when he, we were arguing he would be angry and he'd be all up in my space and I'm telling him to move out the way and I'm a big girl um I felt very I felt like my space was being invaded. And so I thought to myself, man, if I knew some martial arts, like I know I could push him out the way and I have before, but I felt like if I knew like a form of something that I could shut him up and put him in his place. Yeah, get him in his throat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now that I have taken the class, <laughs> don't be scared of me, but I will put you in your place. <laughs> With that said, much love to Professor. You, you hear the confidence <laughs> that she had when she said that? Do you hear the bravery that she... Did you hear it in her voice? Did you, did you hear the bass of the divine warrior? That's all I'm trying to tell y'all. How do you express yourself? How do you gain the strength? How do you build the character? She's, she's giving you your... You tell how we first met. Now she's telling you I wish you would right now. I wish you would. I wish you would. <laughs> we have something from uh, one of our uh, viewers. Hey, Tony. He said, in meditation, there's a calmness that comes. The more you do it with martial arts, a calmness comes with your breathing. The more you train, you don't have to think about it. It becomes natural. Us. Us. I agree. Yeah. Okay, Tony. Works. Tony's another martial arts um, student. Okay, and uh, Tony. Yeah, Tony, you gotta have Professor on your show. He's he's another podcaster. Oh, okay. Oh, he said, uh, I think his is not all men can be wrong or something like that. Tony, forgive me, bro. No. <laughs> Tony, I'm gonna let me see if I can have you up here real quick. Oh, Tony, request me. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Tony, request me. <laughs> I have no request. I wonder Maybe if he's at work. Busy. Cause maybe y'all could vibe, Professor. It no, it's that's that's it. Except. Can Tell you hear me? me? Hey, what's going down? What's up, my brother? Nice to meet Man, you. Man, just picking up some family. You know, taking right. my mother to the store. Okay. But I was I was checking out. Um, I used to do a little. I used to do a little more tie. I did more tie for about three years. Okay. So that's uh, that's how I know, and I know that when I started, my breathing was tense and tight. Mm -hmm. But the more I trained, the more comfortable I got. The more things started to slow down. I was able to process what was going on, and I, I'm not so tight trying to focus on breathing. It becomes natural, and I also did some meditation for a while. Yeah, Jay was telling me that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, Tony, I was saying you you should have Professor come on your show and you guys could talk, you know, the martial arts lingo because oh, yeah. I'm a bait. <laughs> yeah, uh, man, I, I I keep up with it. I watch a lot of the greats. I actually uh I met a uh, uh um Sunshine Muay Thai legend. So I met Sunshine. Uh, I met a couple of UFC champions. My co-host JB, he practiced. He's a purple belt in, uh purple belt in jujitsu. And so he's been practicing for a long time. So um, he does it on a regular. He helps his coach out. And uh, we try to keep up with it. I try to get in there every now and then, you know, as you can see. I try to get in there every now and then. It's key, that's for sure. Consistency. Yeah, but uh, our podcast is the Men Can't Always yeah. Be Wrong podcast. Yeah, that's, that's, okay, Men Can't Always Be Wrong. Men Can't Always Be Wrong. I'm looking in there yeah, yeah. It's all right. See, not all, there's not all women who Man, say Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Sorry about that. I'm in the car. But, uh. We know that. Man, thank you. Thank you, friend. 
Thank you, Fran, for bringing me in and being your guest. Amazing. It's been an amazing show. Uh, I'm a guy, but it's been an amazing show. And I've been, I've been listening to everything. I've been laughing and enjoying it okay. with you guys. But, uh, okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I got to get on. Right. So so appreciate it. it. Are you up? All right. Take care. <laughs> All right. Bye. Oh, I don't know how to end it. Well, that's the end of the show. <laughs> Everybody, yeah, everybody, thank you so much for joining. Uh, please feel free to share. Um, yeah, just share. Have a good night. <laughs> us, us, Professor. Us, us, <laughs> all right, all right. In this. <laughs>